Coming up on today's show, Nissan confirms that the new 2018 Leaf electric car is heading to seven new markets, including Australia, New Zealand, and South Korea. Tesla posts its widest losses yet in official Q4 2017 earnings, but not as large as some analysts have predicted. And Elon Musk's own personal Tesla Roadster explores space with its driver, Starman. These stories and more coming up next. Yep, it's time again for another roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter transport. And today we've got 14 stories to blast through. So let's get straight on with the first news that Nissan has announced it's going to be introducing the new Leaf to seven new markets around the world where the previous generation Leaf wasn't available. Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Singapore, South Korea, and Thailand. The new Leaf, which has a 150% or thereabouts range improvement on its predecessor, also happens to be cheaper, making it more of an affordable proposition in those Asian and Oceanic markets where the predecessor was just too expensive. At the same time, Nissan has confirmed this week that there are four new all-electric models heading to the brand in the next five years, with two EVs due to head to infinity Nissan's luxury mark. With a longer range Nissan Leaf also expected as a higher end 2019 model, I think this year is going to be very interesting for Nissan indeed. Midweek, Tesla announced its final quarter and end of year results for 2017, shattering its own records for deliveries, revenues, costs, and losses. In total, Tesla delivered 1,550 Model 3 cars and a combined total of 28,425 Model S and Model X. But because of increased incentives and cut prices, Tesla's automotive margin took quite a dive in the quarter. It also spent a lot of money on development and other costs, meaning it went from having $600 million of working capital at the end of the previous quarter to a minus $1.065 billion at the end of Q4. The result? Tesla ended the quarter and last year with a net loss of $675.4 million, equivalent to just over $4 loss per share. And while Tesla and Elon Musk are promising great things for the future, as usual, Wall Street has become very itchy over Tesla shares. Thursday alone, Tesla stock fell by more than 6.5%, showing that investors are worried about Model 3 deliveries and Tesla's overall financial future. As you'll find out later in the show, Musk is obviously optimistic still that Tesla will continue to bring new models to market, and as usual, the company is certainly not shying away from taking on new projects, both in the automotive and energy markets. Hyundai published a sneak peek this week of its new Kona EV, a car that will be officially unveiled on February 27th. As usual with teaser images and films, there's very little to see with this particular one. But the Kona is already sold as a petrol model in the US, and we know that the Kona EV will be offered with a choice of two different battery options, the largest of which is said to be 64 kilowatt hours, which would mean a range of somewhere around 250 miles real world, so that's 400 kilometers. But as always, when I have more concrete specs, I'll share them with you here. Promise. Eight gigawatt hours. That's how much electricity US charging infrastructure company ChargePoint said it's now delivering to customers every month through more than one million charging events at its charging stations across the US. Adding more than 1,000 new places to charge every month, ChargePoint says it now has more than 45,000 charging points deployed nationwide. But unlike other charging infrastructure providers, it's worth noting that ChargePoint doesn't own and operate the charging stations. Instead, it sells charging stations to individual businesses and organizations, then acts as an intermediary between the user and the owner of the site, explaining why some sites don't charge you to fill up, while others do. With plans to expand into Europe, Charge point sees a bright and rosy future for the electric car charging world, and I've got to admit, so do I. Following on from last week's news about massively expanding its investment into electric vehicles, Mercedes-Benz has officially unveiled its next-generation Sprinter van, a vehicle which it says has been designed from the ground up to accommodate various drivetrain options, including an all-electric variant. 
The version known as the eSprinter is due next year, says Benz, following the already launched and slightly smaller eVito to market to become the company's second small capacity electric delivery vehicle. Interestingly, though, there's no word on if it will come to the US, where Mercedes Benz says it will be selling a petrol version of the Sprinter because customers have asked for it. So, if you want an e Sprinter in the US, I suggest you start asking for it now, and maybe Mercedes Benz will listen. Staying with commercial electric vehicles, we heard the rumor this week that Tesla is starting to work with some of the larger companies who've signed up to buy a Tesla Semi in order to plan and build massive mega charging stations at each company's depot to facilitate the rollout of the Tesla Semi. To begin with, it looks as if these mega charging stations will likely be private facilities, only letting trucks from the owner company to charge at them. But one of the first major companies to sign up for Tesla Semis, PepsiCo, has said that it may eventually explore sharing its charging facilities with other companies. Nevertheless, with 100 trucks on order, it seems PepsiCo, like many other Tesla semi-reservation holders, will have some pretty large outlay ahead of it in order to make the switch from diesel to electric. At CES earlier this year, Hyundai unveiled its Nexo FCV, the next generation replacement of the Hyundai Tucson FCV, or iX35 FCV, depending on where you live in the world. During that reveal event, the company executives told us that the Nexo would launch with level three autonomy, but that it would ramp up the car's capabilities over the years with over-the-air updates. This week, however, the company announced three Hyundai Nexo FCV prototypes have been successfully driven from Seoul to Pyeongchang in Korea, a trip of around 118 miles, or 190 kilometers. Accompanied by two Genesis G80 SUVs, also autonomous, the trip was a complete success, but it doesn't mean that we'll see level four autonomous vehicles just yet from Hyundai. As usual, there's a lot of additional testing that will need to be done before level four autonomy becomes mainstream. Porsche, one of many automakers who used to poo-poo the idea of electric vehicles, has announced this week that it will be doubling its global investment in electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids to a total of more than 6 billion euros, that's 7.43 billion US dollars, by 2022. Much of that investment is earmarked to go on development of the Porsche Mission E, but Porsche is also saying that it's going to be using some of that newly committed funds to help it develop its own ultra-fast rapid charging network based on the next generation CCS quick charge technology, the same charging tech that will allow the Mission E to charge from empty to 80% full in just 15 minutes. Alongside publishing its quarterly and end-of-year results, Tesla has revised its Model 3 wait times this week and has managed to upset many Model 3 reservation holders in the process. You see, Tesla, while pushing Model 3 to some markets earlier than expected, has pushed back its production plans yet again for the dual motor Model 3, as well as production plans for the standard entry-level Model 3, the one with the $35,000 price tag. And while that means some customers will have to wait until late 2018 for their cars, it also means that some Model 3 customers are worrying that they're not going to be able to make use of the full federal tax credits for electric vehicles, since they think Tesla will have likely sold its 200000 electric car by that point, and thus the tax incentives will have either dramatically ramped down or ended altogether. They say that means that that pushes the Model 3 out of the affordability charts for many hopeful owners. As one commenter noted, it's like the Model X all over again. Despite this much slower than expected ramp up for Model 3, Tesla says it will be at 2,500 Model 3s per week by next month, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said during the Tesla earnings call this week that the company is on target to reveal the Model Y, its next mass market car, sometime in the next three to six months, with production launches for the Model Y planned for 2019 or 2020. As part of that, Musk seemed to suggest the Model Y will get its own new dedicated production facility, or at least be made at a new Tesla factory that isn't the Fremont one, where Model 3, Model S and Model X are currently made. As for paying for it, well, Musk said capital investments for Model Y will begin by the end of this year, a move which will further dilute the number of projects Tesla is working on at the same time. Talking of investments, BP made a $5 million investment in charging station company Freewire this week, further illustrating how importantly it views electric vehicles in its business plan moving forwards. 
What makes FreeWire interesting, however, is that it's a company that produces the Mobi Portable Rapid Charging System, essentially a portable rapid charging station on wheels with an integrated battery pack. The FreeWire charging stations can be wheeled to vehicles which need them wherever they are and can charge up to 10 electric vehicles per day. Also worth noting is the fact that because there's a battery pack on board, the Mobi charger can charge itself up from a washer or dryer outlet rather than needing the usual high power three phase outlet that's required for DC rapid charging stations. BP has already committed to trialing the Mobi units at various charging petrol stations in Europe, so keep your eyes peeled for them in the wild. Back in 2015, the world's first full-size all-electric ferry, known as the Ampere, went into operation in Norway, complete with two dockside charging stations designed to refuel the ferry's onboard battery packs in double-quick time during loading and unloading. At the time it was launched, it was expected that the ferry would make some significant savings in terms of energy and carbon dioxide emissions. But it turns out after three years that those savings are far higher than anybody first thought. It's no surprise then that the ferry company which owns the Ampere has already gone ahead and ordered another electric ferry. Electric propulsion, it's not just for cars. By now, I'm sure you're familiar with the Formula E race series, the I-PACE E Trophy, and the Electric GT, racing series dedicated to all-electric automotive racing. But have you heard about the FIM NL Moto E World Cup, a brand new FIM race series for electric motorbikes? Due to start next year, the race series has chosen Italian electric superbike company Energica as its manufacturer of choice. And this week, the company unveiled the Ego GP, an out-and-out race-ready electric motorcycle with a top speed of 155 miles per hour, that's 200 50 kph, the Ego GP is still in its final stages of race preparedness. But with just a year to go, expect to see a lot more of this motorcycle and the race series in the coming year. And finally, space is big really big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. But after SpaceX made its first successful launch of the Falcon Heavy rocket this week, there's now an electric car traveling through that vastness. Specifically, Elon Musk's own personal Tesla Roadster. Unless you've been under a rock all week, I'm guessing you already know about the very special electric car payload that sat atop the Falcon Heavy's upper stage as it broke orbital velocity, its stage-run rockets gracefully returning to the Kennedy Space Center for a choreographed landing and its stage two suffering a less than perfect landing in the Atlantic Ocean. Musk's Roadster, piloted by the mannequin affectionately known as Starman, was launched into space to prove that the Falcon Heavy could be used as a reliable heavy lift for future missions to Mars and beyond. And while the Roadster was intended to be launched on an elliptical orbit of Mars, it turns out that that third burn designed to send it there was a little strong, hurling Starman and the Tesla off towards the asteroid belt. Not quite, but safe travels to both, and here's to many, many more SpaceX launches. And on that note, it's time for me to say goodbye. I'll be back next week with more cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter transportation news. And in the meantime, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and consider supporting the show through Patreon. And if you're so inclined, you can also send us your Bitcoins at the address in the description below. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep evolving.